This video is a sample lesson for my Final Cut Pro editing course, aptly titled Rough Cut to Final Cut. I've been getting a lot of questions about using royalty-free music in videos, and I have a section in the course that covers that, so I figured I would share that with you now. I thought this would also be a great section to share because it's not Final Cut Pro specific. It applies to anyone looking for music for their audio or their video productions. But if you do wanna learn everything I know about editing in Final Cut Pro, Rough Cut to Final Cut will walk you through one of my projects from start to finish, and I share everything I know along the way, and bonus lessons are added all the time. You get lifetime access, so if you wanna check it out, go to learn finalcutpro.com still can't believe that URL was actually available and now I would like to treat you like royalty by talking about royalty free music now when I should mention there's not a ton of wordplay in this video don't worry the course is not without its puns of course but after like many many hours of you know I wanted to keep people's sanity as they go through the lessons as well let's talk about how you add music into your projects in Final Cut Pro. The first thing to really be aware of is copyright, right? If you're just doing something for fun at home for your friends that's never gonna be shared publicly or anything, you can use any song you want. It doesn't matter, nobody's gonna care. But as soon as you start sharing something or posting it online, that's where you need to really be aware of royalty-free music and how that works. Now there are a ton of places where you can get legitimate royalty-free music online, so I will share a couple of them with you. If you're uploading your project to YouTube and you're on a budget, the easiest way is just to go to your YouTube studio and then click on audio library. And there you're gonna find a bunch of great stuff, including sound effects and music. And you can filter this in a bunch of different ways from track title, genre, mood, artist name, duration, whether or not you do need to attribute them, meaning in the description of your video, you need to actually say who it's from or not. But the beauty of the YouTube royalty-free library is that everything is okay to use on YouTube. Even if the video is monetized, you don't have to think about it. You don't wanna use these tracks off of YouTube. You don't wanna take one of these and put it in a client project that maybe they're gonna post on some other platform. That could get weird, but if you're posting something on YouTube, the YouTube audio library is, is actually a great resource. It's gotten a lot better in recent time and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. The downside to that, and with a lot of the popular royalty-free libraries, is that you start to hear the songs being used across different channels in different videos. And it doesn't feel as special if you use a song that everybody else is also using. The other two services that I use personally, and again, there are many of them out there, but these are the two that I've been using for many years now, are Artlist and Epidemic Sound. You've probably heard of them, especially if you've done anything in the world of YouTube. And I like both of them, which is why I have a subscription to both. Artlist has a more flexible license and it's really great if you do need to do client work and you want to create something that you do put in a client project and then they're gonna do who knows what with. Artlist is really great for that, for making sure that your clients are covered. So Epidemic is a little more strict, but they do have a larger library. And the two advantages I think that Epidemic has over Artlist are the way that you can browse music. It's just easier to go through genres and even go through like subgenres. And if I wanted to do something like, say I wanted to find synth pop, but then on top of that, I wanted to add in, you know, hopeful sounding synth pop that is faster than 122 BPM, then I'm going to have everything here. And the other big benefit with Epidemic is you can download the full mix or individual stems. So if you don't like the vocals or you don't like one of the tracks or the percussion or something, you can just ignore that. You download each of these individually and then line them up to sync them within Final Cut Pro. That's been super helpful to me many, many times. Whereas Artlist, you don't have the option to download individual stems, but a lot of things you can see right here, just these random songs that popped up. A lot of times, if artists do have a song with vocals, they will also upload an instrumental version as well. So it's at least easy to get rid of the vocals. You can combine moods, like I could say epic, blues music that includes claps and snaps. Both services and I think pretty much all music licensing services are gonna give you high quality audio files. And what I like to do is once I've downloaded a track, I save that to an external drive or to our server. And that way I already have a curated folder of music. So especially if I'm traveling somewhere and I don't have the internet, I could just plug in that hard drive and still have you know hundreds of songs that I've downloaded over the years. I definitely recommend if you have the budget to sign up for at least one royalty-free music service, Artlist is a great one, so is Epidemic. I'll put links to both of those in the notes to this section, but also, you know, 
feel free to check out what else is out there and see if something kind of aligns more with your tastes and styles and needs a little more specifically. Thank you.